Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Chris, and I'm coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church. This is PC Studios. How in the world are you doing today? It is August the 31st, 2021. I hope uh, you are doing well today. I hope that you are uh, highly favored um, and blessed by God. Hey, um, thanks for joining me on the show today. We're going to talk about uh, creation. Again, picking up on this, this discussion of God being the creator and us being his creation. We talked yesterday about the results of a godless society. We talked about atheism and Harvard University hiring an atheist. We talked about all kinds of uh, things that lead us to see our culture through eyes. We looked at Romans chapter 1. So today we're going to look at different aspects of creation. And I hope that um, this will help you uh, connect with your creator. Let's get our let's get our groove on and get ready for our show. There you go, man. It doesn't get any better than that. Hey, um, so listen, I want to look at Genesis 1 today. Um, and we will look at that a little bit. Um, I don't know that we're going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with it. Um, and we're going to look at a few other texts today, uh, Acts 17, 24 through 25, and we, and again, uh, and then look at Genesis chapter 1. But we'll talk about that. First, God comes first. There's a lot of times that the scripture speaks spiritually about this, like, uh, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Jesus said you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. In other words, he must be first, right? So there's a lot of times where the scripture speaks to us or communicates to us in a way that... God is first. And in creation, this is extremely, extremely important. When we start looking at the origins of human life, when we start looking at the origins of, I'm looking outside at a magnolia tree right now through my window. It's beautiful. I mean, it's not bloomed right now. You know, the, the flowers have already, are not on it, but it's a beautiful tree. You know, and I don't believe that that happened by accident. Uh, a lot of us are dog lovers. We love our animals. Uh, um, you know, Macy Joy's got a college friend at, at where she stands who, who has one of those uh, little lizards, you know. I mean, people love creation, right? Um, we have grass. We have, we have trees. We have flowers. We have water. You know, we just look around the earth, uh, architecture and, and engineering works, buildings stand and if done correctly, and, and uh, all the, the life from the seas and from wildlife and livestock and people have chickens and pigs and things at their homes. And, and, and t you know, that didn't happen by accident. And there has to be a first. Now, the conclusion here is an atheist is going to say, well, you know, the Big Bang happened. That's what was first. Well, the only problem with that is who gave you the material? Who created, who, what or who or how did that material come into existence, right? When you come back and you, re, you peel back all the layers of evolution and all the layers of thought and ideology, it comes down, it really does come down to this. Something had to come first. There's no doubt about it. Something had to come first. Um, if you're a Christian, hopefully you've come to the conclusion that that's God. All right? That's kind of generic and vague. Doesn't say a whole lot, right? But then we come down to, wait a minute, what's the first cause? Because we, we do live in a world that has cause and effect, right? So we believe in we believe in cause and effect. There's no doubt about it. We believe in cause and effect. Listen, I want you to hear this. We believe in cause and effect. There's nothing wrong with that. It's it's true. So we believe in a first cause. 
And, you know, as a Christian, then we should backtrack that and we should say, I believe that God is the first cause, that God is the creator God, and that he caused all things to happen. Now, that may lead some Christians, and maybe you out there too, to believe, I believe then God did it, and then the evolutionary processes of millions or billions of years or trillions of years have stepped in, and that's how I believe it. I don't necessarily believe that the, you know, from the Genesis account on. And there are some, unfortunately, Christians that do believe that. I am one of the pastors and Christians that's going to tell you, I believe Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I preached on that very passionately Sunday. So go back and watch that sermon if you missed it. But with every fiber of my soul, not only do I believe that God is the first cause, remember he's self-existent. He, he is the self-existent one. He is the eternal, or the Bible describes him as the everlasting God. He needs no beginning. He has no end. We call him in the time chain, because time was created for us, by the way. He's the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end of time as we know it. But he is the eternal one. He's outside of time. He is the everlasting God. He is self-existent. Therefore, he doesn't need an explanation or a beginning. At some point, now you could say material is our God, but material doesn't have intellectual being, doesn't, you know, you can believe that that is it and that we're here by random mistake or consequences that random chance brought this life that we have. The complexity of the human being by itself just defies any, any evolutionary thought processes, how, uh, you know, our lungs are, 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 all of our systems in our body work together as one. How math works, how engineering works, how architecture works, how, you know, how we're, the universe is set up and we're so perfectly aligned from the sun. Uh, how we have that plant life and, and oxygen life and, and water and it just, just on and on and on. It's just... Logic would lead you to believe something created. So the Bible tells us who did. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. That's the beginning of you and me. That's the beginning of creation, right? That's not the beginning of God, because God was there. The eternal God was always there. So... I know that's hard for some people to grasp and believe, but we have to start with the first, and the first is God. And that has me wanting to share a little video. If we're going to talk about the first, let's have a little fun, and let's have a little quiz about all the first that the Bible tells us about. And if we're going to read, I shared Sunday, you're going to read in the beginning. And if you go to Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here you go. And there you have it. Which came first? We know God came first. God is the first. He is the first cause and all the cause and effect. 
And in fact, the Bible tells us, because that's where we turn to, right? In Acts chapter 17, 24 through 25. The God who made the world and everything in it, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in shrines made by hands, neither is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives everyone life and breath and all things. That is our God. Our God is the one who made the earth and everything that is in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. And in fact, Genesis 1 records for us, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I hope that you believe that. I hope with every fiber of your soul. Yeah, there's going to be people out there that are going to say different things. There's going to be people that say, what about this? Or what about that? Or what about this? Or you can't explain this? Or you can't? Well, you can't either. The truth is you can't either. You were not there. No one can by true scientific method and research. We can't go back and replicate creation. We can't go back and and put it in a test tube. And you can't put God in a test tube. Not that God would want that. But God did reveal some things to us. We learned yesterday, didn't we, in Romans chapter 1? All of creation makes us without excuse. All of creation tells us there's a creator God and there's a creation. There's creatures. That's you and me. That's all the animal life. That's all that we see around us. And that by itself leads us back to the first in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hey, that's all I've got for you today. Short lesson, but powerful lesson. And filled with great wisdom, the first cause is God himself. Always go back to the beginning, Genesis 1-1. It answers a lot of questions. Hey, listen, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember these two realities. God loves you, and so do I. You take care now. We'll see you tomorrow.